All right, guys, so in this video, I'm really excited to show you that I created an augmented reality app for social distancing. I'm going to be showing you what you see playing right now, which is me standing in front of the camera. What I'm gonna do is as soon as I get close to the camera, we're gonna be turning red, which is going to be using a line render. We're gonna be changing the material of that line render. If I get further away from the camera, which is going to be a threshold of six feet away, we're gonna be turning that line render to green. That way we can tell people that, okay, so I'm looking at you and you're not actually following the social distancing practices. And that way we can also start using body tracking technology for a use case that we can actually use today. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you how I go about testing this application before we jump into the code and how I was able to make it work. So I actually have my camera pointing at me and I'm gonna show you that as well. So I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna see that it's going to show us what the camera, which is my iPhone 12 Pro, is looking at. So I'm sitting in there. It doesn't look good, but it allows me to test and I'm gonna show you why that is. You guys can see how I can stand up. And the basically I can test it. It's not perfect because the application is currently like looking landscape, but it still gives me an idea. So if I get closer to the camera, which is my iPhone, the, you know, the line turns red. If I get back, then the line turns green because we are beyond the six feet away, which is recommended for social distancing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and we're gonna be jumping in and looking at the whole thing. I'm not gonna be showing you the code. We're not gonna be typing this from scratch because it, it was just too much. I'm gonna walk you through and explain to you each part so that you can create it on your own and you, know, you can push an application like this to the App Store. And it's not going to work with Android because we're using body tracking, but if you have an iOS device and you want to try this on iOS, make sure that you, you do that and try it. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code. So the first thing and most important thing is going to be that we require an AR human body manager. That's going to require, again, that you use an iOS device because body tracking is only supported on iOS right now. So if we go into Unity, I can show you, go ahead and jump back. You're gonna see that the structure here, it's going to be my directional light, AR session, this is common practice on every one of my videos, the AR session origin, which is going to contain the AR human body manager. So this is going to be a component part that is part of AR foundation. And you can tell that I'm using Pose 3D because we are capturing a pose in 3D. You can also enable 2D and also 3D scale estimation. I'm not using that for this video, but I'll cover that in other videos. I also have one video that is older, which is using Pose 2D. So the next thing is going to be the, the human body pivot. So a lot of people ask me, Dilmer, so how does that work? So the way that it works, if, if you go and look at these, this prefab, and I call it the pivot because when the human is detected, it's going to be put at the pivot location of the human. So if I go into it, it's just gonna be a point, right? So when we're looking at the, when you look at the demo in the very beginning of the video, you're gonna see that each person is going to get this point in the, basically in the middle of their body. And then there's gonna be a line render that it's, uh, it's from, the bat, from the camera to the body, and that's, that's basically what I'm doing in the code. So if we go back in here, let's go ahead and look at, I also have a human body tracker. This is the one that I, that I created, the one that I coded. So the way that this works is going to use, you know, the AR human body manager, and it's going to, basically it's going to bind to a method. That method is gonna tell us if there was a body that was added or if there was a body that was updated. That way we know, we can get information about that from AR kit, and then we can you know, create a line render that is going to basically raycast to, to the person's body. Then I have this thing called mock enable, which you can, you can basically use these human body pivot in the, in the editor. That way we don't need to, you know, we don't need to build it. And I don't need to build it because I'm using the, and I'm gonna put this asset in the description of this video, I'm using the AR Foundation remote editor and I, I'll show you, basically that's what I, what I was able to do when I hit play. So that I can test it right here in the editor versus having to deploy that. And that actually saves me a ton of time. Okay, so that is going to be this guy, which is enabled here. You don't need to enable this because it's gonna be enabled by the human body tracker. I also have a line width and also an initial position offset. That way, you know, I can change the position, basically the position on the camera where it's going to be casting from. So I'm just offsetting that by negative 0.15. Also a material, there's two materials in here. One is gonna be green and one is gonna be red. And this one, and this one is gonna say, okay, if you're, you know, if you're less than 
six feet away from the from the camera, then I know that I have to change that to red. Otherwise, you know, you are safe. You're not going to get COVID because you're, you know, you're keeping your social distancing, which is a good practice, right? And the minimum distance to prevent COVID, this is, again, this is going to be in meters. So I'm just doing a conversion to, to feet and then, which is 3.2a, you know, and so on. So you can change this. I mean, if you like, I don't think we need to change them because that's, you know, that's what, uh, that's what the rules are. And then human distance text is just going to be the UI here that I have. It's going to display the text. I need to change this because this needs to support multiple humans. Just know that for now, it's just going to work with one, but I'm going to change the code so that we can create this in, in runtime. And then it's going to be attached to each person that is detected. So for now, just know that it's going to be just the last person that got detected. And then the warning area, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be display, which is this big red thing that says warning. And also something that I got off of Google. Since people can spread the virus before they know they are sick, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it tells you, you know, warning, just make sure you don't get too close. It would be cool if it was, you know, air glasses because, it, you know, you don't have to hold this thing in front of everybody to detect if they are close to you. But anyways, that's, those are some of the structure, some of the prefabs in here that I have in the AR body tracking scene. So if we jump into the code, which is what I wanted to start with. So the first thing is going to be the AR body manager. So I'm going to get a reference to that. And then I also have a dictionary of human bodies because I need to be able to track him. And then basically I'm going to be caching that information. And the guys in Unity did something similar to this. So I, you know, I thankfully for their examples because I was able to do something similar. I also have a, you know, a bull to determine if we want to use mocking or not, human body, you know, the mocking, basically all the settings that I had that I just walked you through. Then if I, if the mock is activated, it's going to be checked. This property just says, okay, the mock human body is not null and the mock is enabled and I know the mock is activated. On enable, I get a reference to the human body manager. I also bind to the human body's change event, which is going to allow me to know, okay, did somebody show up and did we detect a body? Or did somebody, you know, move from the, on the camera? So this is going to be where whenever somebody gets at it or whenever somebody moves around. Warning area is going to start false, so we're not going to display it. If we are not in the editor, I'm going to basically disable the mock. And if the mock is, is activated, then I'm going to, I'm basically going to enable. And I'm going to call the update body tracker point, which is the same one that I'm going to be call, calling from the on body change event. On body disable is good practice to remove your, you know, the, the handle that I that I added to the human body change. So that's what I'm doing here. And then an update, of course, because if we're using mock, this event is not going to trigger. So I'm just I'm just saying if the mock is activated, I'm just going to call the the update body tracker point, which is going to have basically a zero 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 a long number on the tracker ID, and then a null value on the human body because there's no human body is going to be mocked at that point. Now on this event, this is going to be triggered from you know you running on the device or running with the AR Foundation remote editor. Then this is what I gotta do. We gotta do a for each on you know on these two areas. We're gonna get the arguments. These arguments come from the XR AR Foundation, and this is really helpful for you to go through. But just know that this object is going to be passed through this event whenever you know when, whenever that event that event is emitted. When it's emitted, we're going to be looping through each body. Again, this is going to be this supports multiple bodies, but some of the implementation doesn't work quite well with multiple bodies. Just know that I need to make some changes. So for now, just know that it's going to work with one. So I'm going to be adding the first body, and then you know if we have multiple people, say that you are with your friends and you want to track another person, then this will get a new tracker ID. It'll get two tracker IDs if there's two people shown in the camera, and then as soon as those two people move around they're going to, this method is going to be looping twice, right? Because they're, mo they're, they're moving around. If they keep moving around, it's going to keep going through. And of course, this event is going to get executed. The, the big part is going to be this update body tracker point. And I had to go through and, and make, made a lot of changes as I was implementing it. So the first thing that I'm going to get is going to be the tracker, trackable ID and then the human body. So because I'm caching the human bodies in a dictionary, that's going to be the first thing that, that I'm going to do. Okay, did I add this human body already to a dictionary? If I did, I'm going to be passing in the ID and basically get it out. And I call it the cache human body point. I think cache is more, 
you know, it's, it's better practice because it tells me that that's the one that comes from the dictionary versus this one right here where I am creating a new human body and then adding it to a dictionary. Okay, so if we have a human body, what do we do with it? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, for that cash human body, I'm going to I'm going to grab well let, let's go through the let's go through the scenario where I don't have a human body because that's gonna be the first thing that happens. Okay, so we haven't added, we haven't cached a human body. This else is gonna execute. So we need to create a line render. So the the reason why I need to create a line render is because we need to know where that person is in, in relation to the camera. So I'm going to basically write a reference to a line render. I'm gonna call this meta. This meta is gonna is gonna be passing the tracker ID, the human body. I'm gonna create a game object with that tracker ID. I'm gonna create a line render, and then that line render is going to get attached to this. Basically, it's gonna be an empty game object with that ID. Then I'm gonna be passing all the properties that we set up over here for the line. So like the line width and the material, how many cap vertices we have, and then what the transform parent is going to be, which is gonna be this object. And then I also wanted to offset the line render because it, it didn't look right. Because if you do, let's say that you, you're looking at the camera and you're looking at somebody and that line goes all the way across, you're not gonna be able to see the line render. So that's what I added these, I'm gonna be adding an offset. And it looks like the offset is not added here. I thought it was going to be, I don't do that here. I'll show you that above it. This is gonna be just the, the position of the, of the line render. And just looking at this, I don't think I need to do this anymore because the, if you look at, this is go pivot. I'm gonna leave it in here and then I'll, I'll go through this code again. This is where I was doing the offset. That's what it, it threw me off. Let's go ahead and add a to do here. Review this. Because all this is doing, go line render, transform position. I'm actually not even changing the position of this. So I don't think I need to do this anymore. I'm gonna just remove it and do a, and do a new commit. Anyway, so I'm setting the line render and then I'm setting the position count. The position count is gonna be set to two because we only need one, one, one point at the camera and one point at the person and it's just gonna be a straight line. So initial position of this, which is gonna be position zero, is gonna be at the camera, right? Because we're gonna start the camera and then position one is going to be at the person. So the cool thing here is I'm gonna say, okay, if we're using mock, then I'm gonna be using the basically the mock human body position to, to do the rate cast. Otherwise, I'll just use the AR human body and then I return, I return the human line render, which is what you see here. So at this point, we have a line render that is basically a position zero and the AR human body hasn't been, well, it has been detected. So I have the point at the camera and then one point at the human body, at the pivot of the human body. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna add it to a dictionary, a passing in the tracker ID. And then I created this object called the human body point because I needed to store multiple things. If we look at the definition, it basically is going to store a reference to the line render of that human body, also the AR human body, and then the mock human body that I have in the, in the inspector. Okay, so that's going to add that body to my dictionary. Okay, so now the next time through, I need to update the line render, right? Because the person might be moving away, they might be moving from right to left, and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, do I have that track trackable ID in my dictionary? If I do, well, we need to now make sure that we have the position set correctly. So this is where I'm doing the offset. I'm saying, okay, the one, the point that I have on the camera, I'm gonna be offsetting that a little bit. So it's basically gonna have a line like this. Hopefully you're looking at my, at my mouse. And it's gonna go, and, and the reason that it's going to go like this is because the point, if we, if we go here, I'm offsetting about negative 0.15. So it's going, to, it's going to add an angle on the line that I'm creating. So position zero is gonna have, you know, it's gonna be on the bottom right beneath the camera. And then position one is going to be at the actor, which is gonna be the human body. So I'm updating the camera position. I'm also updating the point at the, not the camera position, the, the actual point for the line render at the camera position. And then I'm also updating the point that it's basically tracking the person. Then I do my calculation in here, which is, is fairly simple. I'm doing is saying, okay, I'm gonna calculate the, the, the vector di distance between the camera main transform position, which is gonna be the, the pivot point of the camera, and then also the human body. Because I need to know if that person is within, you know, within the, the six feet that is recommended by the, you know, by the standards. 
So if the distance, if the distance that I calculated between those two points is less than the minimum distance to prevent COVID, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be changing the material on the human line render to be the warning material. So it's going to show the line being red. And I'm also going to display the warning message. And if that distance is basically is, is after or beyond the six feet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a green material and I'm going to say, you know, we're not going to see that warning message anymore. And I'm also going to be updating the distance on my human distance text. That way I can tell people, you know, what the, what the distance is. So if we go back to that, I believe I have that video in here that I can show you. So you can see that I'm showing on the camera as soon as I get within the, you know, after the threshold, the line is turning green. And if I get closer to the camera, the line is turning red. And I also see the warning message. And you can see how the, the target point, which is point one, which is in my hip, it's updating as I'm moving around. And there's also an offset here on the, on the first index of my point, which is right beneath the camera. And then, you know, the point right on my hip. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.